people, when they see someone wearing a burqa, say, ooh, terrorist. Because we've created that narrative. You get de-incentivized to talk to that person. But once that person takes burqa off and still remains Muslim and still fulfills the vast majority of religious norms, but you start talking to that someone, that is the moment where you realize that all the stereotypes you believe are false, that all of those things are untrue, and that you were wrong, and that you should definitely change. What are we telling you in a web speech? A, why identity will still remain and why that way we're not jeopardizing people. And B, why we think that integration will happen and the extremists will not rise. Before that, a couple of points of rebuttal. In terms of leaders, A, leaders do exist in Islam. B, even though they formally do not exist in Judaism, you have a rabbi you want to discuss with. Therefore, vast majority of, leader, uh, of religions have some form or lead of leaders or people they extremely respect because they think they have huge knowledge. Therefore, they do have an incentive to talk to that someone, to respect God that someone says to them and to try to follow what the leader or the smartest person in the religious community tells them. Number two, solidarity with Jews. No, that exists because of the historical reasons. A, because Jews were living in Europe for many, many years and Muslims didn't. And B, because of the entire history that happened with World War II in Europe where the solidarity towards Jews increased even more. Unfortunately, with Muslims, things are quite different. They are more different than us and we think that extremists exactly use those differences. But more of that in my summary speech. Number three, the, the, the story about they feel scared going in the street also goes on our side. Because once you go out with a burqa on the street, you're more likely to get attacked exactly because people have the perception that you are a terrorist. Once you don't have it, you're probably more safe okay. on the streets of any city. Let's talk also about attacks. A, they already happen in the status quo. B, they do have sometimes support of people for being attacked. Why? Because of stereotypes that exist. Therefore, when sometimes someone attacks a Muslim, exactly because we live in an Islamophobic society, the majority says, oh God, that must be a good thing, or maybe that's a good thing. We think that we need to break these stereotypes, and this is exactly the way how we're going to do it. More of that also in my summary. And thirdly, we don't think the general majority will always support attacks, or say, oh, he decided to wear burqas, even though we told him not to publicly celebrate religion, therefore it must be his fault. People generally do not support other people going out there and beating them up. But we think that on our side of the house, even if someone sometimes supported, now on our side of the house, that's not going to happen. And in, in terms of the religious texts and scripts, we think that since those books are kind of confusing, your religious leader has the opportunity to explain to you that the reasons why you shouldn't publicly interpret your religion are the, for the religious reasons, not for political ones. Community and identity. Religion and believing, it can be in the main of, of private. If you want to believe in God, if you want to share your thoughts with God or pray with your God, you don't need a room. You can do it anywhere, anytime, or you can do it in your house. B, you will still have your leader with whom you can discuss things, with whom you can practice your religion, with whom you can discuss whether or not some norms are okay or not. Thirdly, we also say, values you believe in, norms you believe in, still stay. So if you are a Muslim and you think that it's wrong to eat pork, you don't have to eat pork. But you don't have to go out there and publicly constantly talk, we don't eat pork, we don't eat pork. Because it's about what you believe in, and it's about how you feel when you're doing something. Thirdly, we think that once religious leaders are the one discussing these kind of things, that is the moment where religion can adapt and change. Therefore, instead of having a mandatory stuff in school where you're like, can't eat pork and having the school provide you that, you can provide that in your house and do it. And your religious leader can explain to you that that is still a good thing. My partner already gave you an example with Turkey, where adoption happened and people didn't backlash. But the most important thing that we really need to talk about, because we think that we've proven to you that their identity can stay. Everything they believe in, everything they want to do, they get to still do. Therefore, you still get to feel like Muslim. But the problem is, if you want to feel also like French, what happens then? And that's where I get to integration point. No thank you. In status quo, they have an issue to integrate. Why? Because people mostly don't accept it, and then they feel excluded. And what happens then? That is the moment where extremists rise, on both sides. Why? Because we are different, and that is something that tends to scare people. I don't understand you. You're different from me. You're something unknown to me. And how can I approach to you when I don't know what's actually okay for you and what's not? And that is the moment that extremists on both sides use. So extremists of majority tells you they're here to steal your job. Look how different they are. They're all terrorists. Hate them. They're different. And then they feel excluded because majority supports them. <coughs> then extremists of minority say, look at them. They're excluding you. They don't like you. You should also hate them. And that is the moment where extremists actually are bigger and more harmful for everyone on their side of the house rather than ours. What happens when you take off that burqa? Then I might not be scared to talk to someone because my extreme leader told me not to talk to someone who has been. And then once I talk to you, that's the moment where I realize that we 
were actually the same. That we were both humans with just different types of things we believe in, with different norms we believe in. But no, the narratives that do exist and the stereotypes that do exist aren't really true. And that is why we, what, when we think that extremists actually lose arguments. Because then you realize that those false differences that they've been representing to you all the time aren't really true. That not every Muslim is a terrorist, that not every Muslim woman is banned from everything, that it's actually the way of choice, how you want to live your life. But that all stereotypes that are represented uniquely aren't true. Closing. If you hide your religion, if, if religious leaders tell you you need to hide your religious identity, then probably you're not going to be very willing to discuss religion with strangers. Uh, if someone asks you what is your religion, you're most certainly not going to pretend you are not a Muslim. Of course you can say you're a Muslim. The difference is just that you are not going to go and point that out in school and go and pray in your school, rather than that if you do it in your house. So you're not pretending to be something that you're not. You're just not representing every part of the things that you believe in that are really necessary for your identity. Let's talk also about the backlash. So firstly, we think that extremists of minority are going to lose their arguments for two major reasons. First major reason is, finally the society will start accepting you because majority will start talking to you and realizing how wrong they were with all the stereotypes and prejudices they believed in. But second thing is, you're not going to feel like Western liberal democracies imposed change on you because it wasn't the president of France telling you you cannot wear burqas public. Rather than that, it was your leader telling to you, this is much better for you to do. Second thing, society will start accepting them. On two levels this has changed. Firstly, we think, as I already said, majority will change their perception about the vast majority of people. So you're not going to have that, who Muslim must be a terrorist narrative that unfortunately exists in our society. But more importantly, once you start changing yourself and not publicly show your religion or practice your religion, you will finally see that majority accepts you. Once majority accepts you, you get the benefits on both sides. On this world, you get accepted and you get to gain benefits from being accepted on this world as much as you can. But secondly, you also get benefits from up there world because no one bans you to believe in Quran and no one bans you to believe in your morals and your values. Because we think that people should be accepted and this is the way proud to propose.